Welcome back everyone. Uh, today I'm going to introduce you to our latest development car. This is the Mercedes A45 S AMG. We're going to be developing the intake system again. Um, in this video we're going to be removing the stock air box. We'll look at the stock air box first, um, see how it works, remove it. Um, I'll be doing some more 3D scanning, then we'll import that scan into my software, start the development of the CAD, and then we'll show you how we go to get on. Okay, so let's have a look at the, the stock airbox system in this A45S. The first thing you notice, very similar to the A35, is the ECU. They've put the ECU right on top of the airbox, which does create some challenges for us, but um, we'll get to that when we come to it. So, stock ECU is on top of the airbox. You've got your turbo at the back of the engine, which feeds from this tube, which is, looks quite big in diameter off, off the bat, which is good. So the tube comes round and into the airbox, which is underneath the ECU. Um, the airbox feeds cold air from the front of the car, which is from this duct. So this duct is obviously sealed to the, to the front panel. And I'm not sure if there's an entry. So I can see an entry point behind the grill, just above the radiator, there's an opening. So the airbox is basically pulling air, cold air from the front grill through the duct, into the airbox system and around into the tube. So if I remove this ECU, we'll get a better idea of what the stock airbox actually looks like. So I've taken the ECU off and you can now see the filter from the stock airbox. So straight away it looks like there's quite a large paper filter in there. But the first thing I can notice is that the filter is quite close to the, the faces of the airbox on the inside. So that's a restriction in itself. Um, you've got a filter which is trying to pull air in but it's very very close to the, the, the faces of the airbox. Um, Airbox itself looks like it's an okay volume given the constraints of the engine bay. Obviously with the ECU on top you've lost some of that volume. And then uh, we've got a straight path in from, from the duct. So it's not bad. It's, it's a pretty good system. Uh, let's take the rest of the system out now and see how much space we've got to work with. Okay, I've got the stock airbox out now completely from the car. Um, you can see it's not a huge system. It's not, I mean, there's not much space in the engine bay with the ECU on top, but you can see that's where the engine feeds from. You've got an oval shape filter. The filter itself is quite large inside the airbox, but the airbox itself is constraining that filter. You can see that's pretty close to the internal filter. So it's quite squashed in there, to be honest. Anyway, let's have a look at the engine bay. Everything's out now. You can see how much space there is and where the uh, tube feeds into the turbo. Okay, we've got the full system out of the car now. Um, there's a bit of depth here, um, but obviously with the ECU there's going to be a bit of constraint. Um, the good thing is the tube which goes to the turbo is quite good. It's a large diameter entry, tapers down smoothly to the turbo, a lot of breathers and sensors in there. But um, that's pretty good. The bend radius is not too sharp either. So I think we'll, we'll keep that and we'll go from there onwards. Um, obviously, there's a lot of wiring looms in the way, which is going to create some challenge. But other than that, we've got some good space to work with. Just need to work out a solution for the ECU placement. And then we'll see what we can fit in here in terms of our filter size and the general design direction we'll go in.
so scans all done I've processed all the scan layers into my software so in front of me you can see every scan file um, I've scanned different components of the engine in different files which allows me to make it much easier to manipulate and remove things I don't want to see so let's start by removing the stock tube and the stock ECU location so we can look into the actual engine bay in 3D so let's get rid of get rid of that okay so now we can see in 3D the space in which the design will take place so already I've changed some of the colours so in brass colour up here that's the inlet uh, that's where we'll start from it was quite a large diameter already which is a good thing so we don't need to change that um, I've already, already put a reference plane on front of that inlet so I'm bearing my screen is a bit slow to catch up okay so let's have a quick measurement on how big that inlet actually is it's going to rotate this around right. so we're looking at about It's around 95 90 to 96 millimeters in diameter on the inside of that tube which is really good so we'll start from there and then we'll see how how much space we have to move with okay I always look for easy places to mount the system and uh, the obvious places is in this area is down there so you've got the rubber mount which is where the stock air box locates you've also got two places at the back here so um, these two openings is where also the stock air box sits I'm not sure if we'll use that right now because we still need to find a place for the ECU to live which won't be on top of the air box and finally this is where it breathes from so this is the opening where the intake will have to breathe cold air from. So that's pretty much it in terms of the scan data. Um, we'll get started on the design. Um, I'm going to try and see if we can use our patented Venturi style housing um, with a sealed duct. We'll try and put that in place, see where we can put the ECU. Um, I'll work on that and we'll come back to this process hopefully in the next video.